So as discussed before in the overview, clips are the building blocks of Ableton Live. They are regions of music or MIDI information. So let's look at the differences between. So MIDI, if I double click, I can create an empty MIDI clip which brings up the MIDI clip editor in the detail view. This is where I can control sounds already living within Ableton Live. So this is where we would use our instruments tab here, which we will come on to in a bit more detail in the MIDI section of this course. And I would use this window to draw in or record in some information here or language that over a period of time would control a sound. Now audio on the other hand is recording real instruments with an audio interface or a microphone, or it's using samples of pre-recorded material. Now Ableton Live Lite comes with a bunch of samples. We can simply click and drag a clip like this, and you will see this is now an audio region. So if I press play, we will hear a short spurt of audio. Let's now look at importing some audio samples and playing with all these features we've learnt in Ableton Live Lite so far. We'll come on to the MIDI stuff a little bit later as it's a little bit more complex. So first off, we're gonna use this Add Folder tab here in the browser window to find a folder that you can download for free on our Gumroad page, link in the description below, which is a, a free sample pack of audio files. Now this simply creates a link to a destination on your hard drive, and then you can preview all these files within Ableton Live Lite. They will perfectly match the timing of your songs. You see here, mine's at one, two, three. So if I one, two, three. Now, if I play these back, they'll all magically be in time, which is great for getting those creative juices flowing. So how we import these files is quite simply, once we got it here, we can simply click and drag it in. Now that has imported this clip. So if I go into my arrange window here, I'm gonna launch my first clip by pressing this little play button here. So now the detail view comes up and you can see what's going on inside this clip. You can see the audio here, so that's the volume of it. So remember we can turn it down or turn it up here. Double click to get back to zero. We can use these sends to send it to some effects tracks, which are here. And we have another one, which is a delay. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this video. If you've gotten to this point, firstly, thank you so much for watching this far. Secondly, if you could give us a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, it really does help us out. If you're the sort of person who's watched this far, it means you generally care about all things Ableton Live. So maybe consider subscribing to our channel, turning on all the notifications. There'll be loads more useful videos just like this coming real soon. Anyway, Thanks for watching, let's get back to the video. To add more layers to that, we simply will choose another instrument, say the kick drum, and drag it either into this area where it says drop files and devices here, which it will create a new track for us, ready to play our audio. Or we can drag it onto an existing audio track here, and press play. Whoa, we're cooking already, great. So did you notice I pressed them all at this, well, different times, but they all came in on time. So this is something called launch quantization. What does launch quantization mean, Craig? It's this dial here. So it's basically the quantization of pressing play on these loops. So quantization means keeping it in time, essentially. As a default, Ableton Live, generally across the board, is on a one bar quantization value. So that basically means wherever I press play, it will wait till the first beat of the next bar and then we'll play it. Let me demonstrate this for you. So if I have this kick drum going and I wanna bring in this percussion, look at the top of here, one, two, three, four. Now if I press it on beat two, one, two, three, four. Do you see it flashed for a little bit before it went and played it? So essentially that keeps everything in time. Now with this sample pack, I've made it pretty simple in terms of you don't have to take in consideration chord sequences. That's the only bad thing. So if you had a bass track that has an arrangement of four bars, you want to make sure you launch all the harmonic information in time with the sequence of chords and bass and all that. But for this, we can get going. We can just bring a load of stuff in. So you see there, press play on this. Now, once the, once the clips are engaged, the play buttons will illuminate. 
Now, when I press the transport play, which is this play up here, all these clips with the green play button still engage will play. If I press stop, play again, it will play. Ah, uh, how do you turn them off? I hear you say. So this is where the stop buttons in the track work. So we can press the stop button in the track, we can press the stop button here, or we can press the stop button here, which stops all the clips. So there's a few options there. So here we got clips playing on top of each other to cancel each, to get the clips to cancel each other out. Say for example, here, if I choose another kick drum, if I put it next to it, it's gonna play on top, which we don't really want two kick drums playing at the same time, same rhythm, it's just not necessary. But then maybe in another section of song, I want this kick drum to come on. You put it in the list. So you watch here, the same thing happens with the launch quantization. Like up here, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And it turns this clip off and engages this clip. One, two, three, four. So we got to think about when we're using Ableton Live as sounds that go on top of each other, go next to each other, and the arrangement, we work almost down in like a list fashion. So let's add a few more layers to this. So we have our percussion, maybe a synth layer. Maybe like another percussion, like a shaker or something. And let's bring a bass line in. Maybe this one. That's cool. Turn that on. We go around and adjust the volume of things. So you'll see here, it'll start going into red quite quickly. So remember, you can adjust the volume by turning things down quite. You can turn the volume down like this. Generally, you want to stay away from red. Come on to that in a bit more detail in the mixing section of this course. So now what we want to do is create a short arrangement using the scenes. Remember, this is like the list or the organization sections. So a cool shortcut, Control D or Command D in, in Apple, and this duplicates. So I just did it a couple of times here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work backwards maybe take the bass away from that one, the percussion. Let's do all the synths so that just comes in on the chorus there. Kick's gonna stay all the way, drum top. Maybe that could come in here, then we don't delete all that. Drum top, that could come in there, let's do that. Okay, so I've deleted, I've still got the same thing, but now I'm kind of building, like crescendoing. So if I press play here, so if I stop all clips to start again, then press play here. And then bring in the next section. I can turn the clips off and on. Oh, maybe I want that one going actually. So bring that back in. Oh, yeah, we want the bass going on that one as well. Just start again. Bring the next section in. Next section. Turn the kick off and bring it all in. So now you can see this is quite good for sketching ideas and notepad. We've got an arrangement here going on that we have to manually control. So this translates quite well to a live performance area and like a jamming sort of vibe. But in terms of like showing somebody this, you, not, you might not want to perform it to them or you might want to send it to them. That's where we can record a short arrangement. So we want to turn off all the clips here, double click on this stop button. Then what we're going to do is we're going to record the arrangement the clips being played. So whatever I play in here with this record, it records into this view here, which is a range view, which we'll come on to in a second. So if I press record, it gives a two bar counting as set up. Press play on this. That's now recording what's being played in the other view into this view. Let's go down here. See now that's brought that in at that point that I just press play. Next one. Turn this off. One, two, three. 
Rico. Okay, so you get the point. Uh, then I engage this view by pressing this button up here. So what it does is it automatically mutes it. So when I press play now, you're not hearing this and the other view at the same time. So now the other view, session view is muted and this view is engaged. So if I press spacebar now, you're hearing this arrangement and I can move the playhead around and I can move all these things around and just generally arrange it, which we'll come on to later in this course. But essentially range view is the same as what we've just heard, but it's just a different way of viewing the audio and MIDI information. It works kind of like your traditional DAW setup. It works on a predetermined timeline. So we have bars at the top here and we have time down the bottom. The tracks are now viewed horizontally rather than vertical columns. You have all the same track dials here. You have the IO, the monitoring, the on off, the solo, record, volume, panning, and then the sense. Also have the output here. Also you have the same colors and the same names. Let's now look at how we would save all our work within Ableton Live. So if you're on Mac, it's Command S. If you're on Windows, it's Control S and we get the option to save. So I'm gonna go and save it on the desktop. I'm gonna save this as Ableton Live Light Course. Press save. Easy, lesson over. Not quite. So Ableton Live does a weird thing. So if I minimize this, come down to where we saved it. So this is our file here. It saves it as a folder. If I open, we have Ableton Live Project Info. And that's it. Now, the thing that's confusing is we've got audio samples in here, but they are not saved within here. What Ableton Live does is it simply creates a shortcut to where the audio file is saved on your hard drive. Imagine like a fishing line. It just goes and holds the fishing line out. Now, when you save it, it doesn't automatically reel in those samples. So if I was to then give you this file, if I emailed you this file, like a lot of my students do, I would open it up and it would say samples offline. Why? Because we need to do another option in Ableton Live. So we've pressed Command S to save it. Now, once we save it, if we go up to File and go down to Collect All and Save, what that does is it simply reels in all those samples and stores it within that folder. So I press OK. It will ask you, would you like files from elsewhere, other projects, user library, and files from factory packs? Just select them all and go OK. You see, they flashed a little bit. Now, if I go back to that that folder now, can you see I now have backups and I have a samples folder. So there is all the samples that were imported. Hey, hope you're enjoying this video. If you'd like to dive deeper with Ableton Live, why not check out my Ableton Live full course? We not only cover all the awesome things Ableton Live can do, we look at writing, producing a track from scratch, then we look at how we record vocals, mix and master ready for release. So if that's the sort of thing you're interested in, click the links below. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let's get back to class. So that option is good if you have samples on an external hard drive and you don't want to keep plugging in the hard drive. Or if you want to share the project with someone, I would say you have to send the whole folder, not just this file. So it needs to contain everything here. So you would need to send this whole thing here and you can do that by right clicking and pressing compress and then you can send this zip file. Now there's a few other options. So you have save live set as, this is really good for saving your set as an alternative file. So if I go in here and go save as, saves it in the same project and I could call this course V2. So what that does is it will create a new version. It will leave the previous version untouched. So this is good for mixing. If you're mixing different versions and you want to keep the original, you could do this. There is another option called save copy and that essentially does the same thing. We've done collect all and save, which is what I just demonstrated. Then we have save live set as a template or save live set as a default. Things do exactly what they say on the tin. You can save this as a template. So you could have all your effects, plugins and everything on, save it as a template. And when you open up Ableton Live, you can go down to templates and open up a template here. For example, there are some previous, there's ones already made here. For example, the podcast template. If I open that up, we have everything ready to rock and roll in there. We can also save as default live set. So basically that means every time you open up Ableton Live, it will have all your settings pre-made. This is quite good if you have a studio with lots of ins and outputs. 
you can always open up your template and you don't have to do all the routing, put all your plugins on and all that. So yeah, that's saving within Ableton Live.